I'm going to talk to Stephen Silverman now. He is from the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism. Uh, Stephen, we've talked before, delighted to have you on. Um, a couple of things I want your response to. I don't know if you had the chance to see that interview with Chris Philp there, but he revealed to me, the policing minister, who I know the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism and your colleague Gideon Falter has met in recent days. Gideon was, of course, the man who was told not to cross the road and he was accused of being openly Jewish in that very, very sinister uh, um, uh, in exchange with a Metropolitan Police officer. We're in a situation where Chris Philp, who's the policing minister, told me that in six months of these pro-Palestinian marches, he has not attended one of them. What do you make of that, Stephen? Um, well, look, we, uh, we did meet with the Home Secretary and the Minister for Policing last Thursday. And, you know, we, we made sure that they understood the scale of and of the concern that now exists within the Jewish community, not just with regard to what is happening on our streets, but with regard to the way in which the, the, these marches are policed. Now, yeah, am I surprised that Chris Phillips hasn't had um, first-hand experience of them? I, d I don't know. Um, uh, I, I, I honestly am not sure whether, whether you would expect the government minister to venture into one of these marches, but he certainly should have had people who can relay back to him exactly what takes place at those marches. I mean, there are people from the campaign against anti-Semitism who have stood at the side of the road. Gillian Falter wasn't scared enough to go. Chris Philp is a relatively high-profile person. He is someone who a lot of people will recognise, but a lot of people won't recognise him. If he's stood on the street or even been, as I put to him, standing perhaps one floor up in the offices in Parliament as the, uh, as the uh, parade went past, as the protest went past, I mean, that's one way he could, have, he could have dealt with that. But let me ask you about a couple of other things. There is video circulating of a man holding a, uh, holding a poster saying Hamas are terrorists being threatened with arrest. Hamas are terrorists. That is factual. That is an empirical fact. And he's threatened with arrest. What do you make of that, Stephen? Well, we're, we're kind of reliving the same things over and over again. We're seeing management of, um, of these marches rather than enforcement of the law. And this is one of the reasons why we decided to call off our Walk With Us event yesterday. Um, and tell me about that, actually, because I was going to join it, actually. I was signed yeah, up. Yeah, we were looking forward to seeing it. Well, I, 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 will be, I, will be, I, I will go on, on it when it happens. Uh, I will certainly try, and I would have been late yesterday, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that it was to go ahead. It didn't go ahead. Why was that, Stephen? Just explain to our, I got the email, but just explain to our viewers and listeners why the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism decided to call off that march. Well, there were a number of factors. Um, first, as I, I met on Thursday morning with the um, Metropolitan Police's senior public order team um, to talk about what was happening. And it, it was actually clear to me that they did want to try to facilitate um, what we wanted to do. It, it, I think it completely bemused them because we, um, uh, I don't think they'd encountered anything like this previously. Um, but it was also clear I couldn't see any assurance that the the uh, the marches weren't going to police were going to be policed any differently from the way they have in the past. Now, when you couple that with the fact that the numbers who uh, by the end of the week had signed up were in the thousands, um, you know that's that is in fact an awful lot of people to expect the police to keep safe. Additionally, there have been some... But, but the police tell us time and time again, Stephen, that the pro-Palestinian protests are safe, there's no issue, uh, everything's fine. Yes, there are a few arrests, there were two arrests yesterday. I mean, that's just not the case, is it, Stephen? That's just well, not the case. Well, you know, another, fa another factor is the death threats that have been received against senior members of our charity. That's awful. Uh, both by email uh, and on social media. And the fact that we'd seen messages from hostile actors who were planning to join the march to a, oh no, it wasn't a march, sorry, it was a, a walk, um, in order to, to cause serious disruption. And all of those things taken into account, we concluded that as um, angry as we and the Jewish community are about what is happening on our streets, um, our first priority is to keep people safe. And with that in mind, we decided the, the most prudent thing was to, to call the event off. How scared do you feel, Stephen? How scared do I feel? Yeah. I don't allow myself to think about it. I'm very, very aware of the fact that um, uh, Jews are at risk. I mean, look, yesterday they had to cover up the Holocaust Memorial 
in Hyde Park. Yeah, this was Royal That's Parks good. actually, and the Metropolitan Police have pointed out that it was Royal <laughs> Parks rather than the Metropolitan Police. But listen, whoever it is, they didn't, as Lauren Bell Cross, my panelist a little bit earlier, pointed out, they didn't feel the need to cover up the Diana Memorial, for example. That was fine, but the Holocaust Memorial was covered up. It's been covered up on numerous occasions previously, but that that in itself, this this image I'm going to hold up now. If you're listening on the radio, you won't see it, but what I'm going to hold up to those watching on the TV now, this is a blue tarpaulin over a stone and etched stone in the Holocaust Memorial Garden in Hyde Park. What message do you think that sends, Stephen well, Silverman? Well, it's, it's, it's just a new low. It appears that um, anything that is visibly Jewish um, and could incite these mobs, it has to be covered up. Um, and look, you know, yesterday we were sent a video um, from us by a Christian minister. Um, the Reverend Haley Ace. She was standing near one of these marches wearing a cap with a, um, a Star of David on it. She was on the end of the most foul anti-Semitic abuse and told to go back to Poland. Poland, of course, being where the, um, the majority of the Nazi extermination camps were located. So, you know, we are pretty fed up with the gaslighting that we're receiving, not just from the organisers of the marches, but the people who are responsible for controlling them as well. What do you think of the fact that some Jewish people, not very many of them, but we had one of them on the programme yesterday, because I want to get all perspectives on this. There are some people who are Jewish, very, very small number, who have joined the pro-Palestinian marches calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. Well, I think anyone who is prepared to join the march and... Um, chant the same things that the marchers are chanting, hold up signs similar to the ones that the marchers are holding, will be welcome. As you say, they are a tiny minority of the Jewish community and they are the same people. And, you know, they were caught on video yesterday, the same people who during the anti-Semitism crisis in the Labour Party insisted that there was no problem, defended Labour and Jeremy Corbyn in particular to the hill said people were making false allegations of anti-Semitism for nefarious reasons. And, of course, they were exposed by the findings of the Quality, Equality and Human Rights Commission. They are entitled to do what they want, but, you know, if anyone thinks they are representative of the Jewish community, which is, of course, a narrative that they are trying to push, you know, they're sorely mistaken. And the organisers of the marches are trying to push that as well, Stephen. Sure. The Jewish community, in some sense anyway, even though it's a small number of people joining these marches, the Jewish community is split on this. Uh, although, you know, they're individual people, they have a right to their own opinion. It's not as if you're a monolith as a, as a community and have only one opinion. But, but it must... It must I'm, I'm so, I pull it, sorry, Peter, I'm sorry. Can, can, can I just um, come, come back on of that? Of course, of course. You, you, you said the Jewish community is split on this. It isn't. It really isn't. There is a handful of British Jews, literally a handful, who for ideological reasons related to the Israel-Palestine debate have decided to throw their lot in with those who wish to see the only Jewish state in the world dismantled. Do you know what that I... It's not a split in the Jewish community. Okay. It's a fringe group who do not represent the thoughts and feelings of the overwhelming majority of the Jewish community. Absolutely fair point. I had, I mean, you on your social media will get a thousand percent more than I get, probably more than that. But there are people on social media, I'm not complaining, I'm just saying this is, this is, this is factual. Some of the stuff yesterday I received was really unbelievable. There was one, I, I, I don't, I, I'm going to repeat it simply to put to you, and it's not absolutely 100 percent not what I believe. Fascinating that I was interviewing a Jewish person who was on the march because I wanted to get that perspective but also the fact that I, someone, first of all, conflated in this anti-Semitic tweet all British Jewish people with the Israeli government. They are totally separate, and there are many, many Jewish people I know who don't entirely support the uh, Israeli government for lots of reasons, nor should they be held accountable for it. And then said, and, I, and, and the point I was making on air yesterday was what about you know, the innocent civilians, both in Gaza and the innocent civilians in Israel? And this person made a point which was hor horrifying to me, and said there are no innocent Israeli citizens. Unbelievable. That's the tip of the iceberg, Stephen, isn't it? Yes, it, it, it absolutely is. And it is, it is typical of the march. And, you know, something that has gone unreported 
following the incident involving Gideon Falter two weeks ago is we are told repeatedly over and over again that the marches are largely peaceful. It is just a few bad apples that cause a problem. Well, astonishingly, a few bad apples happened to find themselves in the location of Gideon Falter without knowing he was going to be mm, there. Mm, mm, so is this some sort of remarkable consist uh, coincidence where those few bad apples just a stroke of fate happened to find themselves there or is the reality that that is typical of what will happen to a jewish person who engages with that march anywhere along its uh, along its length on those marches do you feel there will be a time or will the circumstances exist that you will be able to put on a walk a march whatever you want to call it do you think that those circumstances will exist will will it be safe for you to do that at any stage or will the logistics be in place or will the environment and the atmosphere be in place well, that the, you can hold the, that the, the thing that we decided made it unsafe was this was not a march a march would be would be controlled in a certain way with stewards and and, and what have you the, the the aim of the the what we planned yesterday was for uh, Jewish Londoners and others to turn up at suggested meeting points and go for a walk wherever they wanted. So it wasn't a march as such. Yes, we absolutely will be um, holding another event and we'll be planning that this week.